stimulates our gallbladder to release the, um, the bile that helps digest things. Like our, our, most of us don't have enough bitter in our, in our you know, we, should, we could be eating this every day of our lives, including the flowers. The flowers are actually good. So it's, it's a cleansing, yeah, it's a slow, safe cleansing of your digestive organs. And that would be the roots, using the roots. Are and the roots as yucky as the rest of them? I've never eaten the roots. Well, you know what? It's it's all a judgment when you say it's yucky, and it's about it's about like like we would maybe think seal meat was yucky, but the Inuit people, because they're used to eating it, they love it. Mm. It's all about getting used to it. And if you get out there and harvest it continuously, and just keep drying it, you can actually end up with maybe a gallon jar or so of dried stinging nettle leaves, and then you have your a supply for the winter of a, a plant that gives you lots of iron and lots of other minerals that are very beneficial to your overall health. It's, it's really um, improves the quality of your blood in such a good way. in the tea or making a tincture. All of these things can be tinctured. But nettle makes a really tasty tea. It makes a really dark, um, dark tea, like it's not watery looking. It's a really rich tea. It feels full bodied. And if you mix a little bit of mint in with it or... It's delicious iced with lemon and mint. It's absolutely a treat. Yeah, it's 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 actually a great mix, like with, with some like with mint or yeah. bergamot or one of the other more aromatic. And it's really it's delicious if it's iced. Iced oh, with mint. Delicious. Well, and cooked, but the sting is gone because the sting is from uh, a chemical that's in there. A chemical that's in there that is neutralized with drying and it, even if I put them raw in salads, even with lemon juice or vinegar, it's neutralized. Even saliva, you can't, um, you don't really get stung once it goes in your body. That one that primrose? Evening primrose. The root is a, tape, a tap root, which is also good, but this is the second year plant. This is a, it's a biannual, it's a two year cycle. So this is the second year plant, so you get the evening primrose seeds and the flowers on this one. These flowers would go into your salads. They're really good for you. And then later on, it'll have seeds. And if you go around with a yogurt container and shake the seeds into it, just go around. When they're in seed, they're not in seed yet. And you'll get, you know, you can gather evening primrose seeds. And once again, how many of you have bought evening primrose seed oil? It's quite expensive, and it's really good for all of the midlife. Um, it's good for everything, arthritis, all of the, especially the aging diseases aging condi conditions so you can just grind them up in your coffee grinder and put them on your porridge it's really good to gather those wild seeds i gather lots of evening primrose seeds every year and they actually taste quite nice in uh, in your well now yeah, going back really to the leaves the, a wonderful remedy for burdock using burdock leaves is if you've got um, any kind of um, inflammation in the eye you, you have a boiling pot of water and you take the burdock leaves and you just dip them in briefly until they get a little bit limp. And they're a most wonderful poultice. It'll really? totally cure styes. Mm -hmm. so it's a real good remedy for styes and conjunctivitis. And any kind of, um, um, like, um, I think even if you had a blow to the eye, that kind of a thing, you know? Like something, um, any kind of eye injury. It's very soothing and cooling and drying. Yarrow. So we're gonna see yarrow later, but have a good look at the yarrow. This is another really good blood medicine. This is ab absolutely the master of the blood, yarrow. I bet you all know this plant. It's got a very strong, pungent smell. Did anybody not know this plant? Anybody not recognize it? It's got a white flower. It's got a very pungent aroma. But we'll move along. So there's three parts to what you would use in the mullen plant. You could use the root. The leaves of the first year rosette and the flowers of the second year plant. So you don't take the leaves off this tall plant, you take the leaves off the first year plant that's just single it's on the ground. You'll, I don't know if you'll see one. You, I don't want to trail through the garden. So this time of year, you'd be gathering the first. If you look at the little leaves, they've got little tiny holes in them. 
Now this plant is a nervine, as well as a digestive plant. And the little sacs under the flowers um, hold this kind of this red oil. So if you if you pick these, you see how I harvest St. John's wort is with the scissors. I harvest a lot with the scissors, and I just clip off the tops mm -hmm. into a basket. Mm -hmm. Like the whole plant is medicinal, but it's mostly in those little seeds, those little sacks under the flowers that you get this red um, oil. And if you one of the traditional ways of using St. John's wort is to put it in olive oil and fill it up fill the jar up, the olive oil up with some um, flowers and set it in the sun for about a month or six weeks and it'll make a red, red oil and that's one way you can use St. John's work.